All oral regimens of direct acting antivirals are now a standard of care for treating chronic hepatitis C. Understanding their efficacy and safety in a real world setting remains a priority, so as to better characterize their risk benefit ratio in a broad and unselected population. In phase 3 studies, the combination of dacolfovir plus sofosfovir with or without rivavirin for 12 or 16 weeks showed response rates exceeding 90% across multiple patient subgroups with good tolerability and few discontinuations for adverse events. A compassionate use program was established to provide access to the clotasbeer ahead of its European approval. In it, the clotasbeer was given with sofosfovir with or without rivavirin to ACB infected patients in urgent need of treatment who had no other therapeutic options. Conducted in a real-world setting, this program provides a unique opportunity to evaluate this combination in a large, diverse population with severe liver disease. Eligible patients were adults chronically infected with any ACB genotype who were at high risk of hepatic decompensation or death if left untreated. Patients with HIV or HVV co-infection, hepatocellular carcinoma or decompensated cirrhosis were permitted with no restrictions on MELD scores. Patients with conditions requiring immediate viral clearance were also eligible regardless of liver disease status. The recommended regimen was daclatasvir 60 mg with dose adjustment as required and sofosfovir 400 mg once daily for 24 weeks. At their discretion, physicians could add rivavirin or reduce the duration of treatment. Follow-up at post-treatment week 12 was used to evaluate sustained virological response. Patients with missing data due to loss to follow-up, consent withdrawal, or treatment discontinuation for undocumented reasons were excluded from the efficacy analysis but included in safety assessments. Data from 485 treated patients were analyzed. 26% received rivavirin and 86% completed at least 20 weeks of treatment. Most were infected with genotypes 1 of 3 and 70% were previously treated. These patients had a very advanced liver disease. 80% of them had cirrhosis, of whom more than 40% were child pew class B or C. 55% had low platelet counts and one-third had low albumin levels. 18% were liver transplant recipients, of whom more than 40% were cirrhotic, and 11% were co-infected with HIV. Most characteristics were comparable between patients treated with or without rivavirin. However, the rivavirin group had a higher proportion of genotype 3 infection and indications of more advanced liver disease, with a slightly higher proportion of patients with child pub cirrhosis and MELD scores above 10. Overall, 91% of patients achieve SBR12, 92% without rivavirin, and 89% with. 41 patients failed to achieve SBR12, 14 for biological failures, comprising 13 relapses and one on treatment breakthrough. There were 27 non biological failures. After excluding this, SBR12 increased to 97% overall and in patients treated without rivavirin and to 96% in patients who receive rivavirin. After adjustment for difference in baseline characteristics, 
There was no clinically significant effect of rifavirin use on the probability of virological failure. Excluding non-virological failures, SBR12 was consistently high across baseline subgroups, irrespective of HCV genotype, cirrhosis status, liver disease stage, or prior treatment experience. High SBR12 rates of 100% in liver transplant recipients and 98% in HIV HCV co-infection were also observed. In our cohort, genotype 3 infected patients had more advanced liver disease. Overall, 89% achieved SBR12, similar with or without rivavirin. Response was slightly lower among patients who were treatment experienced or had decompensated cirrhosis, largely due to non-virological failures. Excluding non-virological failures, overall SBR12 was 92%. Our data suggest a gradual improvement in liver function, with the largest melt changes generally observed in patients with the highest baseline scores. 57% of patients with child PUB and 70% with child PUB cirrhosis experience an improvement in MELD score at post-treatment week 12. However, the short duration of follow-up precludes any definitive conclusions about treatment-related changes in underlying liver disease. Daclatasbir plus sofosfovir was well tolerated with or without rivavirin, and there were few discontinuations for adverse events, despite the severity of liver disease in this population. Serious adverse events were infrequent and mostly related to liver disease progression. Only 2% of them were reported as potentially treatment-related. The safety profile was consistent with phase 3 data for this regimen and similar with or without rivavirin. 10 patients died during treatment, mostly from causes consistent with advanced liver disease. No death was considered treatment-related. In summary, daclatasvir plus sofosfovir with or without rivavirin achieved high rates of SBR12 in this large, diverse cohort of patients with potentially life-threatening liver disease. Treatment was well tolerated and associated with improvements in liver function. These findings are consistent with the results of phase 3 studies of this regimen, further supporting its use in a wide spectrum of patients with chronic ACV infection, including those with severe liver disease and other medical complications.